Hey, my name's Joel. Um, I have a 2004 WRX STI that I converted for drifting. Last week I asked if there's any questions that anybody had so I could do some answers. Um, and so a bunch of you have sent in a bunch of questions for me, which is awesome, and I'm hoping to answer them all on this show. As well, I have a set of neons that I'm going to be giving away. Uh, all the conditions are for the giveaway is that you subscribe to the channel and that you comment. The winner will be selected by a random generator that will ensure that you've subscribed to the channel and that you've commented. And I'll use that through TubeBuddy so it's fair. I'll also video the process of selecting it so everyone knows it's not rigged or anything like that. I'll get in contact once I've drawn the winner and yeah, you'll be sent out uh, some cool seven color neons. Um, they change colors, they do flashing, they do music. I'm going to do an install video soon for when I did this. And yeah, let's get into it. So the first question that I got was on a scale of one to broken spine, how snappy was she? Um, it was fairly snappy at the track. However, that was just due to the fact that I have it too low at the front at the moment. So it's, it's kind of diving in a bit hard. I haven't got the toe settings correct in the front and rear. So I'm going to put the toe in a little bit and the toe out a bit more in the front as well. It was very hard for me to relearn how to drive the car. I was always used to all wheel drive, which is clearly very different to rear wheel drive drifting and basically learning to let go of the steering wheel and let it recenter was a big thing. So eventually by the end of the night, I kind of understood that that's all I had to do as well as a handbrake entry. And yeah, just kind of learning all of that was a big experience for me. So obviously my first drifting day out ever, um, hope it wasn't going to be great, but you know, I'm pretty excited for the next one, which is going to be on the 31st of this month. And yeah, we can see whether I'll raise the front up a bit. I'll see whether I can get these uh, adjustment settings a bit better. And hopefully I'll be a little bit better than I was the first time. Always uh, going to be going upwards from here, I suppose. Once I learn the car a bit more, uh, it's going to be a lot more fun. And I'll hopefully be a lot better. Unfortunately, at the moment, because it's winter, it's very hard to get good footage because obviously it's pitch black out there. It's about an hour out of where I live uh, to get to the track. And so a lot of the footage isn't that great. So you're just seeing lots of swirling and shaking and all that sort of stuff. But as it gets into more summer, the sun goes down later, be able to get way better footage for you. Question number two, are you actually just using Macca's trays to drift? Yeah, that's actually the secret. It's still all wheel drive. I just did all those videos just to cover the veil over everyone's eyes. So yeah. Come to Driftex. Um, I'd love to go to Driftex. I unfortunately don't have a trailer, so to get my car to Melbourne and by September, I believe it is, um, is going to be really hard. I'd love to go, but I'd also love to be not as bad as I am right now. I'd like to learn the car a bit more because last thing I want is to go interstate to go drift and just suck and then have a million photos of me just sucking or crashing or whatever. So. Hopefully next year, I'd be keen as I'm trying to sort of get a little bit more around the, around the place, that'd be cool. It'd be cool to do different tracks. Um, also hoping to get out to Archie as well, because um, you know, it's such a cool track. I just, yeah, need a bit more experience behind the wheel, further away from everyone, so I don't have everyone watching me and pay me out. So do you like stuff? Yeah, I like stuff. I like drifting. Um, that's why I like to film drifting. Um, I, I do love other other sports and other forms of motorsport, but I've just found that drifting is just a jam. And even with one night out drifting so far, like it's literally been the most fun I've had in this car in seven years that I've owned it. So um, yeah, I do like stuff and hopefully I can give you more drifting stuff with in the future. Um, am I running any type of tune? If so, what type of turbo injectors and stuff? Um, I am running a tune. I got a tune by Matt Ashley. Um, it's an ECU tech tune at the moment. Um, Matt's at Diversion Garage in Brisbane. Um, but he, I had it at his previous work. He's now moved on to a new workplace, which I'm hoping to get tuned again. Um, he's done a great tune on it. I absolutely loved how the response and everything of the car goes. It gets good fuel economy. It doesn't feel like it's pinging. I've got a little uh, Gretti infometer and most of the time monitoring it, it seems, seems like it's really happy. Um, I did get it tuned when it was all wheel drive. So basically now what I want to do is I want to go there, make sure that I can get a new tune with the rear wheel drive settings on it as well. Uh, he's going to be put another a bunch of cool stuff like, you know, anti-lag and all that sort of stuff, launch control and all that sort of stuff. 
onto it, which would be sick. And yeah, I'm just gonna try and get it a bit safer. I'll probably pull the power down a little bit, see if I can get some torque or whatever. Um, but other than that, it's around 206 kilowatt. I've got the standard VF3039 uh, turbo, and it's got the standard STI pink injectors at the moment, which I believe are 550, um, 550 liters per whatever it is. Um, so eventually I will upgrade the turbo, I'll upgrade the injectors, the engine has 150,000 Ks on it, so I don't want to push it too hard. The last thing I want is to have to rebuild the whole thing again, because I've only just you know, done all the head gasket and all of that. So I'm going to probably sit around the 200, 200-ish kilowatt zone. Um, it actually spun all four, like through first to fourth uh, happily when I was out the track, and it likes third gear. So I probably keep it around this power level for a while, maybe upgrade the turbo, get a bit more response out of it. But other than that, I'm not going to chase any crazy power with it because as we know with Subarus and crazy, crazy power, um, yeah, it's not a great time. I've obviously, if you want to watch all of the build, I have all of the other episodes of when I had the engine out and all of the stuff that I replaced. Um, stuff like the windage tray, the oil pickups, the oil pump, you know, water pump, all that, they're all upgraded, and, uh, you know, timing belts and all that, so, yeah, um, pretty much, it's a standard-ish setup, um, a lot of bolt-ons, and just a lot of stuff to make it try and, you know, be a bit, uh, more reliable. Are you planning to go EJ25 if the motor blows? Um, I haven't really thought that far ahead. If the motor blows, I probably... Depending on um, you know how reliable I can get this engine to be, I would like to just keep it as a 207. I like the response that you can get from a 207, and a built 207 is you know, pretty good. Um, so, I mean, uh, ultimate would be EJ207 with the EJ257 heads, um, just so you've got the intake and exhaust variable valve timing. But uh, at this time, I'm pretty happy with the EJ20 setup or EJ207. Uh, it's a JDM one, if anybody wondering about that. Um, the Japanese domestic one, so it's forged internal, semi-closed semi deck. Um, so it's a good engine. And they uh, happen to be the last of the forged engines that Subaru released, in Australia at least, uh, because of emission laws. So it's got a good reliable engine in it. If it does go and I have problems in the future with EJs, I might just, you know, go for a different type of engine, maybe like an RB or, you know, a Barra or something crazy. But at this point, I'm just happy to stay with what the what's in the car. Um, if I ever decide, you know what, I want to actually go full all-out rear-wheel drive car, all I can do is I can swap the, rear, the center diff over and the rear diff again um, and sell those, or maybe even keep it depending whether my new car has an R180. And um, yeah, then I'll be able to continue, I can sell this as an actual WRX STI. All of the parts that I've done are just upgrades. And then there's the center diff and rear diff, which make it into a rear wheel drive car. So yeah, you know, uh, into the future. Really hoping I don't blow anything up. I'm gonna be monitoring everything and making sure that I'm constantly changing all the fluids and checking the heating and everything, um, making sure that the car's reliable as I can. And yeah, we'll see how we go from here. Who knows? Would you ever buy a full rear wheel drive drift car? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've always wanted one. I've had a, I had an S13 at one point. I've had Commodores and I've had, you know, rear wheel drive cars in the past. Um, I do love the Subarus. Um, I was a Subaru tech for many years. So for me, it's just a really easy car to be able to fix and work on. I've pulled engines on them. I've done head gaskets. I've done all these things so it's very easy for me to sort of translate all of what I've done practically onto this car. I also have a bunch of friends that work at Subaru so you know if I ever need advice or anything like that I can go straight to them. They're happy, they're specialists, you know, um, they're a really good bunch of dudes and it's cool to have something different um, as much as you know it's a bit of a you know stuff around to kind of learn and it's a lot of work uh, I find that it's just more fun. I mean it wouldn't. It would be more fun to have a crazy built RB and an S13 or a, you know something like that, a 2J or something like that. It'd be sick. But yeah, just at this time, like I'm just kind of enjoying having something different. And um, you don't really see too many STIs out of the track. Uh, a few of my friends have Liberties, which is sick. 
and um, yeah, I'm going to be filming some more of that, hopefully pretty soon, once they're, you know, built H6 turbos done, and, you know, Bug Eye swapped uh, Liberties all, all on the road and stuff, so that's pretty sick. Um, so, yeah, but I'm just going to stay with the Subi for the moment, see how we go, you know. A similar question, um, why did I decide to rear-wheel drive swap the STI and not just get a drift car? Um, I just wanted to kind of be a bit different. It's something that I had already, and doing a lot of research into making a rear-wheel drive Subaru, I found that a lot of the parts that you want in a Subaru drift car um, are actually all on the 04 STI. So I was quite lucky with that side of things, like um, the upgraded axles and all of that sort of stuff, all of the suspension components, just the two uh, 207, you know, all of the parts that I would need to sort of build a good base for a Subaru drift car are on this thing. Um, at one point I was thinking, well, why don't I just buy a cheap, you know, a, a cheap WRX and do it up? Um, I'd find that I'd have a lot less power and I'd have to do a lot more to, you know, you have to keep swapping out axles as they break and you have to keep swapping a lot of parts um, because they're a lot weaker. Um, this has a lot more strength in it with parts. Um, unfortunately, everything's a little bit more expensive, but you know, as a base that I was going to build with, this thing was perfect. And you know, it's getting high in mileage. It looks good on camera. It's actually far from good close up. Um, so you know, it's it's had a rough life. I've I've enjoyed it for the seven years I've owned it. And at one point, it was extremely clean. Um, but yeah, you know, and it's a bit of sacrilege for a Subaru owner to, you know, make it rear wheel drive and all that sort of stuff. I get a lot of flack from the Subaru community, but at the end of the day, I'm a drifter at heart. I've always loved hanging out with the drift crowds. Um, you know, I kind of hang out on my own if I go to like a stance meet or whatever. Like I, I'm not really into huge, into, not very clicky as a person. And um, yeah, it's just, you know, I go out there and all the drifting guys are all mad dudes and I just wanted to kind of get out there with them. So yeah, I had it and I only had to do a few things to get it to go well. So I did so. What are my plans from here? Um, I'm going to upgrade the turbo. I've been looking at a few turbos that would be um, pretty beneficial. I'm also going to get a retune with a reflash through the ECU um, through Diversion Garage with Matt. Um, and get a bit of reliability out of it, make sure that I've got a few things that are gonna make sure that if the, if something goes bad with the engine while I'm mid-track, I don't just continue driving on it, it will shut down or it will tell me stop. Um, I'm gonna eventually get a trailer, hopefully, for it and probably deregister it if it gets too crazy because I don't really wanna be driving it on the street with all this crazy stuff and then have it red labeled or something like that. Um, for the time being, you know, I don't really drive too often for work. I, I catch the train, so this thing kind of sits in the garage and, um, yeah, I make sure that I lock it down and so it's not going to get stolen or anything like that. And, but yeah, for the future, turbo, um, injectors, uh, probably a bigger pump. Um, if I can build the engine eventually, I'll build it, but it all comes down to money. It's a very expensive hobby to have. And like, you know, I'll probably use what works for a while. I seem to be pretty happy with all of this, so um, I'm probably gonna need a bit more lock eventually, and um, I've got some friends that are working out some uh, Subaru sort of lock mods and all that sort of stuff that maybe we'd be able to convert some GTEC parts to from S14s and S13s and stuff to work on their Subaru, so that would be great. And that would be a lot easier to be able to just you know, if a part bends or breaks or snaps, we'll be able to actually just swap back over instead of having to custom make everything. So, um, onwards and upwards from here, I want to get better at drifting, obviously. Um, get a lot more track time. I can't wait for Matsuri, which is in October. So, I want to make sure that I know how to drive the car by Matsuri. So, I'm going to try and get out there as much as I possibly can. And, yeah, like, maybe a roll cage, all that sort of stuff. Some safety features as well. I don't want to just be upgrading and upgrading and upgrading and then, you know, have something really bad happen to me because I haven't worked on safety in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, uh, I, you know, who knows? Bank account willing. Hopefully I'll be able to make it some pretty crazy. Was it fun building the car? Yeah, it was really fun. I had a great time. Uh, I spent a lot of time on my own in the garage and a lot of late nights and, um, you know, it was really stressful putting the car together because I was kind of worried that, although I've done it a lot working on cars, 
when it's yours and you kind of have yourself to rely on, I mean, I had a lot of friends that I could ask questions and all that sort of stuff, but everyone's extremely busy. So, you know, they can't come over at some crazy late night hour and help me. So, um, there was a lot of times where I was actually really worried that I'd done it right. And, um, yeah, it's sort of one of those things that I just got to keep checking, make sure that the whole time that there's, you know, there's no little sporadic leaks coming out of the car or anything like that. And, um, there's a few things that I got to change and mess around with, but, um, yeah, basically, um, it was really fun. I really enjoy working on cars and especially now that I'm no longer a Subaru tech, it's a lot of fun to revisit that world because I do have a desk job during the day. So now I kind of sit there not utilizing any of my skills. So I'm happy to work on my car. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's, it's fun meeting new people and all of the drifting community that's really helped me out a lot. And even all of the mechanic community that's helped me out a lot because it's just a, a different project to kind of be involved with. So, um, as well too, you know, Hox Mods and uh, Reese, he's been great. You know, he's always on board. He's always keen to do new stuff. And, um, you know, he's doing some cool stuff as well. So hopefully he gets his drift car together soon and, um, you know, we'll have a big drifting group we can go out and have fun with. So, yeah, it's been fun as. How much did it cost? Um, it cost a fair bit, to be honest. But at the same time too, a lot of the costs that were involved in doing this car up is all stuff that I needed to replace. Like a lot of the bushes were already stuffed, so I needed to replace them and all the mounts and all that sort of stuff. Um, I wanted to strengthen the engine anyway, so all the head studs and oil pump and all of that sort of stuff, I was gonna do regardless. So basically the drifting side of it cost as much as the center diff and the rear diff, as well as you know a few small things here and there that kind of make it into a bit of a drift car um, but basically the rest of the car that I've built is all if I took the center diff and put the standard one back in and I put the standard rear diff back in it would just be a WRX again or an STI um, again and it's basically just building a strong Subaru and then adding a few parts to it so I guess if you were to say the real drive conversion it was about I think it was about maybe 5,000 to get it rear wheel drive. Um, and yeah, it's not including the labor as well. I've done all the labor myself. So it's one of those, you know, how, how short's a piece of string or how long's a piece of string scenarios because I spent probably maybe a month. Like I've, I've built it over the last eight months, but I've spent a month with the engine out. You know, I've, I've sent it away. I've had machining done. I've, you know, done all these things over a long period of time that if you were to do it at a workshop, it would be tens of thousands of dollars. Whereas I was lucky enough that I have the, all the tools to do it myself and I have the space that my parents were willing to lend me, which I'm very thankful for because my car was pulled apart at their place for a long time. And because um, I, I have an apartment, so I don't really have anywhere to work on the car. And um, yeah, it, it's was expensive but it wasn't as expensive as if you took it to a shop and said I want this so um, you know and as well over eight months instead of just one big lump sum of money I was saving money every week and putting money into it every single week um, to try and get it to this point so um, yeah it's been a fair bit I probably would have been able to buy a pretty cool drift car for the same price but I mean, to me, it's a pretty cool drift car, so I'm happy. It's um, obviously I've got to learn how to drive it a lot better, but yeah, it's 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 still you know my baby, and I really enjoy this car. So I like I like the journey that it's been. So yeah, um, that answers all the questions that I've been sent. Uh, if you have any more, leave one in the comments. I'm I'm happy to answer them in the next show or whatever like that, or maybe do an episode about them. And um, yeah. Also, don't forget to uh, comment on it or subscribe, and um, you could win yourself a set of neons. Um, I've got, you know, color changing, sort of sound activating. You can do one color, you can do flashing, you can do all sorts of stuff. I've just had it on the setting which rolls through the different colors just to sort of show you what kind of car they are. I'll do a bit of a, um, a zoom in now and show you exactly what it looks like a bit closer up. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Drift SCI.